now I need to set up my outlet so I would go to outlet and I would go to edit and it takes me to another toolbar here I can suggest um, if I want any influencing pressure on my outlet so by default the gauge pressure is z zero which means all of my flow inside the body is influenced by the inlet 4 meter per second if you want your flow to be influenced by the outlet you can select a different gauge pressure here so if I were to set my gauge pressure to a value that's not zero that that means that from the outlet it will suck the air out of the volume at a certain pressure which means it will influence the conditions normally we do not want our conditions to be influenced by the outlet we just want our conditions to be influenced by the inlet so we can well and truly leave the gauge pressure as zero but for your application if you want your outlet as an extract fan or if your outlet is wanting to suck air out of the volume um, then you can select the gauge pressure however in this case we want our simulation to be influenced only by the inlet again leave the turbulence as default similar to the inlet and we go to thermal and make sure the temperature is the same as inlet which is 30 degrees because we want the same temperature at inlet and outlet if you have reasons to have a different temperature at the outlet please feel free to do so but in this case um, one temperature at both inlet and outlet should be sufficient so I click OK and it takes me back to my um, to my um, outlet so I have set my airflow at the inlet and outlet and um, that just leaves me with my airflow at the control volume uh, which means these are the walls so there are three walls here and the three walls are technically my circle walls because if you remember very cl um, clearly all the uh, um, other walls were selected as symmetry which means that the three walls we see here are the front wall the back wall and the other wall here so we cannot call it by the name because we had um, called it front and back wall but nonetheless these are the three walls that appear here uh, what can usually be done with the walls is you can set a temperature to it so if you want to set up um, um, some sort of a temperature because clearly it's a wall so you cannot select any momentum parameters momentum is not selected because you cannot simulate an airflow through it uh, because it's a solid structure the only thing you can set is temperature so if I go to temperature and if I say my wall has to be a hot wall so if you remember inlet was set at 40 degrees uh, sorry 30 degrees so I can probably set up my wall at 50 degrees just to see how the heat transfer will happen material I'll make sure I select steel and then that is 50 degrees similarly with the other wall 13 I can select um, um, 50 degrees again just for the sake of it it does not have much effect on the results but it allows you to see some temperature contours so you select 50 make sure this is aluminum steel 50 again and then the final wall which is here uh, which would again be selected as 50 degrees steel so in a nutshell what we've done here is selected our inlet speed and temperature selected outlet pressure and temperature and selected the wall conditions and now we are ready to simulate so once the boundary conditions are out of the way uh, mesh interface we don't worry about this much um, because the interface is already set so we don't need to really change anything in the um, interface zone and um, uh, we are not looking at dynamic mesh dynamic mesh technically means if you want a mesh to move if you remember at the start of the video they were steady and transient so if you want a time-based simulation and you want the mesh to move then um, the d dynamic mesh options can be used but in our case we just want a steady state s um, simulation <coughs> excuse me so uh, we have set our boundary conditions now let's move so we are done with the setup part so that can be finished let's move to solutions the first option here is solution method if you look at the scheme pressure velocity coupling all of these are different ways of ANSYS simulating your pressure velocity coupling so what is ANSYS basically doing it is just taking your pressure 
and speed at every element and just simulating it just running an algorithm in the back zone and then just running your model um, and it has different schemes um, for example the simple scheme is called semi implicit pressure linked equations simple um, that is the one that is commonly used um, it it has a different algorithm from PISO which is again something to do with the pressure equation solver and it has a different um, equation from coupled so all of them again are doing the same thing you have to remember that all of the pressure velocity couplings are trying to solve the same thing the way they solve it the way the algorithm is written um, written is in a different way but all of them are trying to do the same thing so by default couple was selected but the most common one is simple so we would go with the semi implicit pressure linked equation and then similarly, uh, this t t um, tells you what are the different parameters that will be solved. So you, we will be solving equations for pressure. The, s the, the software will be solving it. The software will be solving equations for momentum. Momentum means X, Y, Z <coughs> speed. Then we have turbulent kinetic energy and turbulent dissipation rate. Remember the K epsilon model. That is what this is. Um, K kinetic energy and E dissipation rate so we will be solving the K epsilon model and energy is what we will be used to solving the temperature that we have selected um, as our temperature equation on so these are the different models that will be solved right so once you select simple controls it um, tells you uh, what are the different numbers associated with it we don't have to worry about this um, at the moment um, because these are set as default relaxation controls um, in fluent um, reports um, again if you are looking to get a report for it that's fine we don't need that monitors as well these are just if, if, if you want to check your residuals um, residual I will um, come to it in a moment let's go with the basic one which is the initialization so if you click double click on initialization it asks you to initialize initialize means the point in your model where you want the flow to start from so if I want my flow to start from the inlet then I will initialize from the inlet so I will click on standard initialization and I will click on compute from inlet because that is where I want my flow to start off from so I would go to inlet and um, and then initialize and these are all um, things that would come by default we don't have to worry about these um, temperature was we set to 30 degrees and these are your X and Y speeds that the software has automatically put in your model um, so if you um, um, if you want to just check whether everything is fine if you look at the speed of Z minus 4 which means if z positive is towards the left z minus 4 means towards the right and towards the right means towards your circular disk so that means our z speed is correct if you look at the x and y speeds they are set to e minus 32 which means 0 0.000000 32 zeros and then you get some speed which technically means that x and y speeds are technically zero so all of my speed is in the Z direction negative which means towards your circular disk which is perfectly fine uh, because the Z direction here is positive that means we are going against it which is negative and we set our temperature to 30 so uh, once I have in, uh, made sure that my in, um, initialization is from inlet which is here I can just go and click initialize so now I've initialized my solution that means I am about ready pretty much ready to run now so I would double click on run calculation and here it tells me how many iterations I want to make iterations are your equations so if you want your algorithm to be solved how many times so let's start with a very basic one if I give it 10 iterations and if I click calculate it will now start running residuals 
and it's also finished that means I have run my equations for continuity XYZ speed K epsilon turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate and temperature I've run my equation 10 times but do you think 10 times is enough to run a model if you are looking uh, we had what about 2000 elements on our model so if we just run those elements 10 times do we think we will get an accurate result no we won't 10 iterations are far too less to solve our model so we will run it for more we will run it let's say 100 times so click calculate again and now it says use um, the same settings yes absolutely okay so now it is now simulate uh, my um, residuals and I will tell you what this means now once it has finished running our residuals what we see on the x-axis are my iterations so yes we ran it for 110 10 first and then 100 later and these are the errors so on the y-axis these are my error bars so one this is means that my error is one over here or you could say 100 percent but as we are running more and more iterations the e the error bars are starting to go down which means the errors are now starting to for the blue line which is my energy line the error is 1 e minus 10 which means this is a very small percentage if we look at the black line which is continuity my error is approximately 1 e minus 2 which is 0 0.01 which is almost 1% so my error is 1% here and the rest of these are much lower than 1% so what we want is our solution to have least possible error and when my residuals are going down this means the solution is converging converging means the errors are dropping on the contrary if these lines were to go up that would mean the solution is diverging diverging means the errors are going above one above 100 percent which we clearly don't want so from our sake we would want the lines to go down but how would the software know that at what point to stop no how would you know um, that uh, my solution is now accurate enough for me to um, proceed seeing the results and that is where ANSYS does a very smart thing by stopping the solution immediately once it thinks that the sol solution is converged so take a look at this if I run this now for a thousand more iterations and if I click calculate again warning standard warning uh, this is a warning if you want to continue from the same point you left absolutely okay and now let's see what happens you see calculation complete so um, what this has done is even though I ran my iterations for thousand but it stopped at about 120 and at 120 residuals the software decided or the software concluded that now your error bars are your your errors are much smaller than what I need it to be and therefore your solution is accurate so you see the software is telling the user that your so solution is now accurate enough for you to run because the um, because my algorithm suggests the software algorithm suggests that the error bars are much lower so that's a good sign it means that the user is um, at the peace of mind that when the software stops residuals themselves that means the solution is accurate 